Rod Serling. You're listening to The Zero Hour. Rest your eyes. Exercise your imagination. Today, Keith Walker is robbed through the vineyards of horror. Why is Ted Marcosi driving Aunt Sally insane? Starring Lyle Wagner. In a mutual broadcasting system presentation of... The Zero Hour. Brought to you by the Ford Motor Company, Beech Nut Chewing Tobacco, Shenley Industries, Matu Swine, and Kodak. This is the Zero Hour on Mutual Radio. My daddy was a mighty fine man. He taught me a thing or two. A woman can hurt, so you stay on your guard. And beach nuts of the tobacco you chew. Them times we'd go fishing, my daddy and me. He'd tell me everything you ever knew. You'd go after Big Mouth, then close to the bank. And beach nuts of the tobacco you chew. Around here, beach nuts the word for chewing tobacco. And it's been that way, father and son, for a long, long time. What's the secret? It's the way beech nut just keeps getting better. Like beech nut's a lot moister these days, with more taste and less stems. Big improvements. You ought to try today's beech nut chewing tobacco. And now I'm a daddy with a son who's full grown, and I tell him a thing or two. Scared money don't win, evil women drink gin, and beech nut's the tobacco you chew. something for everybody, even Aunt Sally's, a kindly old spinster who just happens to be rich. Join us now in the great dining hall of the Marcosi Mansion for Why is Ted Marcosi Driving Aunt Sally Insane? Does the madam wish anything more? Oh, Nessu, my compliments, Rosalie is truly a fine cook. Madam... Our hearts are but to serve you. I will bring dessert. <laughs> now, where could that good-for-nothing nephew of mine be? Oh! Get away! Ernesto, someone! A frog, for God's sake. There's a frog in my plate. Madam. Take it away. Take it away. It's ghastly. I'm sorry, madam. How could a frog... It fell from the ceiling. A froggy. <laughs> froggy. Oh, it's in the salad platter. It's in the salad platter. I have it, madam. I will dispose. Lordy, a frog. Now, how could a... Good evening, Auntie. Oh, oh Ted, lion's sakes, you scared me to death. Where have you been? Dinner's over in the most... Oh, Why, Auntie, you look positively white. Well, you would be, too, if a frog fell in your dinner plate. Hmm, perhaps he was only looking for a home. Oh, Ted, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Gads, but it's good to have the breath of life in this old muscle here. Well, I'm glad you invited me. Will you be able to stay the summer? Of course. The city's become a bore, and I wouldn't think of leaving you. Well, Ted, the candles, they blew out. Oh, don't worry, Auntie, I'll get them. Oh, my chair, my chair, it's moving. Be calm, I'll get them lit. But, Angie, what are you doing way over there? Oh, oh, something or someone moved my chair. Now, you wouldn't be fooling with your old aunt, would you? Why nonsense, I was at the end of the table. Oh, well, okay, but I want to tell you, strange things are going on in this house. Call, madam. Oh. Angie, why don't you take a good night's sleep? Do your world of good after your day of excitement. Oh, yes. Oh, you're right. Ernest, so see that Master Ted has anything he wants. Uh, shall I uh, help you with a chair? No, dang it. I've got to learn to run this blame chair myself. Uh, good night, Ted. Good night, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> 
damn. Should have had this elevator built larger. Come on, chair. Do your stuff. Have to have this chair beefed up. Look out, look out, Matt. You all right? Oh, Rosla. Rosla, the night tried to kill me. Look at that. If he's on the empty armor. Don't contradict me. Look. How could that be? Damned if I know. I looked up and its battle axe was swinging down. And see how deep it has cut into the floor. I shall look inside it. <laughs> I want to see me, madame. Oh, enough. I'm going to bed. Tell Ernest to cart it down to the cellar with the rest of the medieval junk. I never did understand my late husband's preoccupation with that stuff. And Rosla. Yes, madame? Be sure I'm awakened when my niece arrives in the morning. Corday? Well, Sally is an old and dear friend. But I don't understand her heart. It hasn't acted up in years. Are, are you sure nothing unusual happened here tonight? Oh, no, Doctor. Not a thing. You stand alone and wait. She's 20 minutes late. She'll find a smile will go a long, long, long way. Just check the smile on any crocodile. Savor those smiles in great pictures with Kodak's Pocket Smile Saver Kit. You get the newest, littlest pocket instamatic camera, a roll of color film, magic cubes, extender, a handsome carrying case, and more. All for less than $30. So you save money while you save those smiles. The Kodak Pocket Smile Saver Kit at your photo dealers for a limited time only. With just a little cheer that spreads from ear to ear, a little smile will help you light your that smile tastes rich with our smile saver kit. You'll see a smile will go a long, long smile will go a long, long way. From Kodak. Hello, Ernesto. Uh, Miss Glenda, welcome home. Oh, thank you. Would you... I mean, I can't get my luggage. Well, little Miss Muffet, welcome to Horror Hill. Oh, Ted, you shouldn't talk that way about Aunt Sally's house. Pooh, my sweet but backward youth. <coughs> Ted, what was that? That sounds like Auntie. Come on. <coughs> Ted, my shoes. Forget them. Come on. <coughs> Mr. Ted, please, in here. Oh, I was preparing Madame's bath, and I came to wake her, and... Oh, God, Ted, look. The bed is covered in blood. Oh, Ted, is that you? Easy, Auntie, easy. Teddy's here with Glenda. Are you all right? Oh, it's blood. Someone's poured blood all over me. Rosala, get Ernesto to burn the bedding. Glenda, help me get Auntie in her bath. Glenda! Relax, Aunt Sally. Let Ted get you into the tub. Uh, maybe you'd better help her. I'll check on Ernesto. Okay. Oh, Glenda. I'm so glad you've come. The most terrible things have been happening ever since Ted arrived. Oh, no, no, he couldn't. Couldn't what? Do you think he had something to do with the blood? I don't know, truly. He's always been so attentive. But I must confess, it all started with his arrival. Lights go off when I'm in the room. Go on in the middle of the night. Two days ago, my wheelchair lost a wheel in the garden, right near the edge of the cliff. But tell me something. You see him much more than I do. Is he all right? Oh, I shouldn't tell you this, but Ted is heavily in debt. I know because he tried to borrow from me. Practically demanded that I take money from Father's trust. I, uh, I didn't give him anything. But my brother left him a fortune. 
I told him it was time he started acting like a man and did something with his life. Well, you could have given him some, you know. Your share of the estate was just as large. Well, perhaps... Well, never mind. I'll talk with him. Now, let me look at you. Oh, my dear niece, must you look like such a frump? Goodness, look at the way you've got your hair. Well, it's the way it's most comfortable. Oh, bah. How do you think you'll ever attract a young man? And look at that frock. Off a rack. I don't think I'll ever attract anybody. But Ted thinks I look pretty. Well, Ted can't marry you. We just have to do something about you, or you'll end up a shriveled old lady like me. Ted! Ted, where are you? Up here, top of the elevator shaft. Well, you've really made a mess of our plan. The old girl is getting suspicious. You folks realize you don't have to give up luxury to get the gas economy of a small car? No, you don't? No, you don't. Mercury Comet is the only small car with the luxury of a little cougar in it. <coughs> That's just one reason why this year, Comet outsold Fiat, Audi, or Volvo. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. You're looking for a small car with good resale value? Yeah, no. Well, here's an interesting fact you ought to know. The 1972 six-cylinder Mercury Comet is selling for more money today than the day it was new. I didn't know that. Mm, it's hard to believe. It's true. And Ford Motor Company offers gas-saving steel-belted radial tires on Mercury Comet. And on all its small cars, Ford Pinto, Pinto Wagon, Maverick, Mustang II, and Mercury's Capri. Well, I, I didn't, didn't know that. that. Well, now that you know these things, you can't afford not to see your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer today. If you see him in the morning... You could be driving home in the small car you want tonight. Suspicious. <laughs> the old girl's smarter than I thought. And you're getting more stupid every day. Our plan was just to scare her. And just hold the elevator door, Ernst. And we collect the Wait, listen. She drops dead. No. But your heavy-handed lack of imagination has her suspecting everything. Oh, Ernesto, how could they? Shut up. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> There now. When the old girl gets on the elevator, oh. zap, we inherit. Ernesta, get me out of this contraption. Can I hear her chair. Take me down the back staircase. I'm calling Inspector Fushit. Where's Ernesto and Rosala? Ernesto's with the old lady. I don't know where Rosala is. Damn, sounds like she's going around the other wing. Oh, the elevator will work just as well later. Are you sure you trust those two? <laughs> I'm sure of it. They're as money hungry as you. In fact, they came to me. Rosala caught me dumping a jar of moths in the ventilating system. She got Ernesto, and the two of them made me promise to come up with a hell of an amount. <laughs> Why not? I'm sure you and I can think of a way to dump them later. <laughs> I'm sure we can. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Let's go down and cheer Auntie up. <laughs> Madame, you forgot your robe. Madame? <laughs> I have never used elevator. No, I mustn't. See, who will know? It will be like I am the mistress. Which button? Come on, I think. Oh, God, what now? Oh. Oh, please, please answer. Oakland, please. Hello. Hello, this is Sally Marcosi. Uh, you'll have to speak up, man. Hello. Hello. Oh, dear God. I mean, still let go of my brother. My room is... Oh, good girl. For a minute, I thought his thumbs would go right through. Oh, you hit me. I only want to scare him. You did that all right. Ernesto, he didn't mean for Rosalind to use the elevator. That was an accident. I told you. Besides, she wasn't Let supposed... Let me... Ernesto, your wife was never allowed to use the elevator. You understand that, don't you? 
Where's good woman? Yes, we know how you feel. Besides, Ernesto, without us, you get no money. No money? And now, you get Rosalie's share, too. Oh, I didn't never think of that. <laughs> Other good women must be here. <laughs> now, we've got to do something right away. I overheard Aunt Sally trying to call the police. I think I cut the line in time. Well... Now that she knows, we'll just have to increase our terror tactics. Ted, why don't we just... Well, you know. <laughs> Kill her? <laughs> now, listen. You've got to understand. She must die of a heart attack. So there's no investigation. Let's go. I've got an idea. I hope you know what you're doing. This place gives me bumps. Look at that old guillotine. <laughs> Come here, look at this Iron Maiden. The idea back then was you put someone inside and slam the lid and the spikes went right through the heart. Oh, how awful. <laughs> I just didn't know. I don't like it down here. Come in, Auntie. We have a surprise for you. <laughs> Ted, Glenda. Don't, you can't. I've always treated you like my own. Shut up. Ernesto, wheel Andy over by that wall. Oh, what are you going to do? Why, that's simple, Andy. Stand away, Ernesto. We're going to make your heart stop. This is a crossbow. You'll notice the steel arrow? I'm told this will penetrate a six-inch piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, can't you find a better way? See, Auntie? <laughs> Maybe one of them will go right through that chair of yours. Ernesto, stop her! Get out of my way! Ernesto, watch out for the guillotine! <gasps> oh, my God! Ernesto's lost his head! Come on, she's getting away. Grab those other arrows. Here, only two. Stop! Listen. There, there, it sounds like she's gone up the ramp to the gardens. Here, this door. There she goes, down by the arboretum. You circle around in case she tries for the garages. I'll cut across. <laughs> it's no use, Auntie. I know where you are. Come on, sweet auntie. Maybe we can make an arrangement. Auntie, over here, I won't let Ted hurt you. I tell I won't. What the... That's her chair. Where's auntie? Auntie, come out. Where are you? I don't understand. Better stop this chair. Now, how do I turn this thing off? I see you, auntie. <laughs> Glenda. Oh, God, uh, Glenda. Uh, Ted, why? And I didn't mean it. I thought it was Auntie. Uh, oh, God, don't die. He tricked us. Got out of chair. Oh, sweet sister. Don't, don't. Good of you to drop the bow, Ted. What? Now hold it right there. Oh, good. I was hoping I'd said enough on the phone. I do not understand it. It's a shame it is. I have known the boy all his life. More than a shame, Inspector Fouchard. Fouché. If only they had waited a few more days. A few more days? Yes. You know, there was a special secret clause in their father's will. Why, when the two reached 30, they would receive the rest of their inheritance. The rest? Was it much? Oh, yes, it was a great deal. My brother must have known his children very well. Matus is an old world rosé wine people enjoy everywhere. Like down in the Delta, they know the blues are what you make it, and that the light, easy to like taste of Matus rosé makes the meal. Hey, hey, rose. Man, on the 
West Coast, Matus is out of sight. But you see it everywhere. And in New England, Matus Rosé is perfect for that elegant evening on the town. Matus, the rosé wine that goes with everything good, anywhere, anytime at all. Rosé. Imported by Dreyfus Ashby and Company, New York, New York. I'm Rod Serling. Close your eyes, exercise your imagination, and join us again on our next presentation of The Zero Hour. Why is Ted Marcosi driving Aunt Sally insane? Is an original radio drama by Keith Walker. Lyle Wagoner was heard as Ted Marcosi. Featured in the cast were Arlene Harris, Rhoda Williams, Luke Krugman, and Herb Vigran. Zero Hour, created by J.M. Collis, directed by Don Hills, is produced in Hollywood with a mutual broadcasting system by Radio Productions Incorporated. Music is composed and conducted by Stanley D. Hoffman, Rochelle Sherman, associate producer. This has been a presentation of the mutual broadcasting system.